questions, could you just raise your hands? Jen. What's the between well, between the splits between the yeah fifty yeah, fifty still yeah 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 it's, it's, that hasn't changed and the split between the the featured and the session players is sixty five percent contracted performers thirty five percent to the session players but if if you're a um, say you're a band and you haven't got any session players then you'll get hundred percent. Yeah. Well, it's the other way around. The PRS grants the license to the BBC. Yeah. Yeah. the To be perfectly honest, I can't answer that question, and I'll tell you why. Because both PPL, I, I kind of do know what PPL gets, but I don't know what PRS gets. Because effectively, it's a commercially sensitive negotiation, and the BBC insist that since they're just, you know, commercial negotiations, that nobody reveals what the other organisation gets. Right. Yeah. Well, I would guess the truth of it, the songwriters and publishers. I don't know why. I just imagine you get much larger payment for a Well, well, I'll tell you what. What I what I can tell you, you know. Is that PRS collects more money from the BBC than PPL does, but the reason for that is that songwriters get paid whenever the song is used, whether it's from live performance or from the record. Right? PPL only collects from commercially released sound recordings. See, so for instance, if you're if you're a PRS member and you're doing a gig, if you're in a small bar here. If you go right to P PRS and say, look, I've done a gig in, in this bar, you know, I've played 20 of my songs, and these are the songs, PRS will pay you. PPL doesn't pay for that. PPL pe only pays from your commercially released record. Okay. So because the BBC has a lot of live output, then obviously they have to pay PRS more because they're using a lot more music, both live and recorded. Because PR, PRS text for both, live and recorded music. Hi. Uh, online streaming, like Spotify, and stuff yeah. like that, what happens with that? Okay, well, <clears throat> that's, that's actually it's a good question, but the, what happens is that online streaming, like Spotify, at this point, PPL doesn't license Spotify. Mm -hmm. And the reason is the PPL basically licenses what the copyright owners give us to license. Right? So the way, the way it works is this. When it comes to broadcasting, when you sign your PPL mandate, you automatically give PPL the right to negotiate on your behalf for all broadcast music. When it comes to online music, you have a right to opt out and say, actually, I want to make my own deal for online music. PPL, you've got nothing to do with this. Right? In the case of Spotify, all the major labels did their own direct deals with Spotify. Right? And there's, you know, there's quite a lot of controversy about it because what most of the labels seem to have done <coughs> is take an, an equity stake in Spotify. And what that means, they, part of the deal for issuing the licence was that they own shares in Spotify. Right? So Spotify does really well, and you know there is actually quite an interesting model. <coughs> it's happened several times now. The best examples are kind of YouTube and uh, Last FM. But what happens is a, a, um, a service starts to operate online, and they have no license. They're using all kinds of people's music and lyrics <coughs> and stuff without any permission whatsoever, and they operate in an unlicensed fashion just long enough to get big enough for somebody to buy them. Right? So in YouTube's case, you know, Google bought them for $1.3 billion. In the case of Last FM, CBS bought Last FM for $258 million. Right? So then the, the directors of the, of the company say, oh, thanks very much. And off they go. They've, they've got their money. The performers whose 
work has been used to build the business, they don't get anything because they've been operating unlicensed for three years, right? And then they effectively they just get frozen out. At this point, Google is now trying to pick up the licenses for YouTube. You'll, every now and again, you'll see there's been disputes, like with Warner Brothers Music, where they pulled all their videos off YouTube because they couldn't agree a license. PRS had a dispute with YouTube for the same kind of reason. Right, so Google is now trying to get those licenses in place. The original people who started it, they've got their money. <laughs> they don't care. Right? So with Spotify, the reason it's controversial is because the companies have taken an equity stake. If Spotify turns out to be worth billions of pounds in five years' time, then the companies will get a payout as shareholders. <coughs> Unfortunately, nobody said how the performers are going to get paid out of that. Because, you know, the money's going to go to the company. They won't be able to necessarily identify whose music it's going to be payable to. And when they can't generally identify, they generally keep it. Right, which makes the performer side not very happy. <laughs> okay. So Spotify, at the moment, has done individual deals with the record companies. You know, they did a deal with AIM, the Association of Independent Music, representing the independents, um, <coughs> and then they did a deal with all the majors. And then they're doing some smaller deals now. But that's the situation with Spotify. Yeah. Is it similar, therefore, in terms of the fact that you don't currently have a license for podcasting or uh, on-demand internet music use? Um, is it a similar situation in terms of what you're mandated to... Yeah, well, uh, yes. Well, the situation with podcasting <coughs> is that PPL does issue a podcasting license. I think it's about 250 quid or something. Um, and again, where people have given PP PPL their new media rights, the money that comes in from that will be distributed against the people who have given the PPL their rights. Um, is there anything that you could do with the Spotify model uh, to represent the performers, whereby... Um, obviously what the labels have done is quite shrewd it's a risk but it's shrewd they've mm -hmm. taken an equity stake um, but there's a risk that the performers are going to lose out if Spotify gets bought yeah. could you go to your performer members and say um, give us the right to go and negotiate a deal with Spotify and the like I think I mean, there's already conversation with Spotify. I mean, there's no Paul Brown that runs it. Um, what, what I'm much more concerned about at the moment is making sure that accurate performance data is collected, you know, about what Spotify has been using mm -hmm. for the time. Because basically, if accurate performance data has data's been collected, then when the record companies get an equity payout, we can demand half of that money. We know who to pay it to. Right? Where it's, where it's always difficult is, is if you don't know who to pay it to. Because then it makes it very, very difficult to collect the performance share. So that's, that's probably you know, where the focus of my attention is, making sure that accurate performance data is collected. On that point, does, um, <coughs> I thought Spotify, like, leave aside all the equity and if they sell it in five years' time, yeah. is there not a royalty payout at the minute that goes to the record companies based on a... There is, pay? there is. But the, the point is, and I, in a way, I, I guess that probably will give you the reason for my suspicions. Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't seen accurate data, but you know, the, the, there, is, there are rumours, for instance, that Lady Gaga, for 1.3 million plays on Spotify, yeah, got 150 quid, right? Which will give you an, an idea just how <coughs> pathetically low but is the, is the licensing that, rates are that the companies have done. Right. So if they've done such a low licensing rate, they must be looking to get paid somewhere on the back mm -hmm. end. Right. Is that also, though, perhaps because Spotify aren't really making much money and it's, they're paying out a share of well, their... Yeah, but what I would say is, is that the generous side of it is that the companies have been under pressure for some time to enable new business models, you know, of which Spotify is one. Mm -hmm. yeah, and obviously quite a good new business model from a consumer point of view. You can get what you want when you want it, stream it as many times as you like. So the companies are actually trying to make a positive move not to put the company out of business before it gets on its feet. Mm -hmm. right? um, and I can understand that. But 
but at the same time, you have to say, but if the rates that are being paid to Lady Gaga are anything to go by, is it actually a proper business? Mm. You know, because actually, you know, on the one hand, you don't want to put your emerging businesses under, but at the same time, there's no, re there's no reason why performers should pay for somebody to build a business. You know, without getting properly paid back. But on the other side, it's 150 grand more than, than than what Lady Gaga would get if, if people just got everything off file sharing and well, pirate you, being. Well, you say that, but <coughs> but if if yeah, <laughs> you say that at the moment, as we as it stands, the downloading market, not for singles but for albums, is only 13 percent of the market. Right, eighty-seven percent of the marketplace is still CD sales. Right now, if people can get Lady Gaga streamed on Spotify as many times as they like, why would they buy the album? Now, if, if only you know a thousand people bought the album that wouldn't otherwise, because they can get it any time they want on Spotify, she'd get a lot more than one hundred and fifty quid. See what I mean? Yeah, I see what you mean. <coughs> so is, is you know, that, 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 is, that is a 2010 kind of statement that the way things are moving is much more online. Yeah, the um, way th yeah, I agree. The way things are moving is much more online. But the thing is, there, there are a lot of things which are stated as fact, which actually aren't fact. Right? Loads of people say, it's all about downloading these days. Well, no, it's not. If 87% of people are still selling... CDs, then it's not all about downloading. Maybe it's going to be all about downloading, but it's not there yet. Yeah, but surely, with it, I'm just interested with the TPL, I don't know if they, was there ever a chance where Spotify could have come to the TPL no. and arranged a deal? No, because, the, because like I say, people can only license what its members give it to license. And the record companies, you know, they, it's up to them to decide what is going to be licensed through PPL and what they're going to license direct. So they just, no, it's just... Right. There was never that point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.